Now the last category of anemia is the hemolytic anemia, which is usually the final most important one. Hemolytic anemia basically means basically means destruction of red blood cells. Usually, red blood cell destruction or either inside the vessel itself. That's mean we call this as intravascular. Okay, hemolysis. Or destruction outside the vessel, we call this as extravascular hemolysis. Okay. Now, first means intravascular means destruction will occur inside the vessels. Extravascular means destruction occur outside or hemolysis occur outside. That's mean in the spleen or the liver exactly where exactly in the macrophages okay this is the macrophage okay so how how this occur usually usually this is the red blood cells abnormal red blood cells for a reason of another i will not talk about the reason now so this is get phagocyte by macrophages and macrophages release two things first release globin globin will go as amino acid and then release heme and heme by a process of protoporphine and then by a long pathway lead to release of unconjugated unconjugated bilirubin this bilirubin is a protein is albumin lipid soluble albumin bound so unconjugated bilirubin this bilirubin is responsible for jaundice in case of extra jaundice in case of extravascular hemolysis okay jaundice will appear in the blood how about in the vessel in the vessel so the red blood cell distract or get hemolysis in the vessel itself so the, here is the red blood cells red blood cells in the vessel hemolysis so will release what will release hemoglobin usually hemoglobin needs another protein binding for hemoglobin and in this case this protein binding we call it haptoglobin so haptoglobin usually combine with hemoglobin but when there is when when the when the process of destruction or or when the hemolytic process is continuous, that means we will consume more haptoglobin. As a result of this, haptoglobin will decrease in, in will decrease in the blood. So, haptoglobin level, haptoglobin level will what will decrease as a result of consume more, more, more haptoglobin. So, as a result of no haptoglobin, will bind with hemoglobin that's mean hemoglobin now will become free and hemoglobin once will become free now hemoglobin become free in the blood and that's mean will go where you will go and filter to the kidney now hemoglobin will go to the urine okay once hemoglobin will go to the urine there is there is one or or, or two one of two consequences either hemoglobin will appear in urine directly so that's hemoglobin urea and this will lead to the iron deficiency anemia or hemoglobin hemoglobin filtered by filtered by proximal converted to uh, by the tubules proximal converted tubules so this will lead to the hemosiderine urea okay so two important consequences in case of or or maybe three important consequences in case of intravascular hemolysis first you will see haptoglobin level decrease second thing hemoglobin urea iron deficiency anemia and the third thing is hemosiderosis you will see jaundice here sure you will see jaundice but it is because of unconjugated bilirubins that liberated from or released from hemoglobin is really in a small amount compared to the large amount here of unconjugated bilirubin so rarely you will see obvious jaundice in case of intravascular hemolysis what other things you will see other things that you will see in two types of anemia first put put in your mind LDH increase this in this in put type even unconjugated bilirubin as I said increase increase in both types but sure keep in your mind this is much 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 more than other types okay this is much greater greater than extra than intravascular hemolysis and what other things keep in your mind this point this is very 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 important how about reticulocyte count reticulocyte count or what you call it 
Corrected reticulocyte count really is more than 3% in case of hemolytic anemia. Why? Because you don't have problem with the bone marrow. The main problem in the hemolysis itself, which is intra or extravascular hemolysis, that means the bone marrow will still release more, more, more reticulocyte in the, in the blood. Once you will see a patient with anemia, go to the reticulocyte count first. If you will see reticulocyte more than corrected reticulocyte more than 3%, that means hemolytic anemia. That means you don't have problem with the bone marrow. Once the patient with anemia, again, any patient with anemia, look the second step to the reticulocyte count. If you will see reticulocyte count more than 3%, that means bone marrow is functioning well. That means there is a problem outside the bone marrow. One of the problem which I'm talking, which I talked about here is hemolytic anemia. Either you have problem in the inside vessels or you have problem in the outside vessels. Okay. Final talk about in, about both types of anemia. If we need final talk about both types of anemia regarding intra intravascular hemolysis, keep in your mind three or four examples. What kind of hemolysis of red blood cells usually in the vessels? First, you have enzyme deficiency like glucose 6-phosphate, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. This is one. You have PNH, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, uh, also intravascular hemolysis. Complement mediated. We will talk about all of these in details, but you need to know the big pictures now. Complement, complement mediated like IgM, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And finally, mechanical destruction of red blood cells, mechanical red blood cells destruction. as aortic stenosis okay these are very important to remember in case of intravascular hemolysis once you will see intravascular hemolysis keep in your mind there is either a problem with the enzyme like g6pd pnh complement mediated like igm autoimmune hemolytic anemia or mechanical red blood cell destruction like aortic stenosis how about extravascular hemolysis extravascular means the problem outside red blood cell outside vessels that's problem in the liver or the spleen macrophage play an important part usually you have hereditary spherocytosis okay this is usual problem sickle cell disease pyruvate kinase deficiency okay autoimmune hemolytic anemia but keep in your mind it's igg type here it is igg type it's responsible for extravascular hemolysis while igm type of autoimmune hemolysis anemia it is intravascular hemolysis because this type is complement mediated while whether other type is igg autoimmune hemolytic anemia is antibody mediated if you don't understand now this no problem we will talk about this in the next video Finally, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia could be intravascular, could, could be extravascular. S micro angiopathic hemolytic anemia. Some, some people like DIC could be ex extravascular or, or intravascular, it depends. So keep now, again, keep in your mind these two causes. Now, if you will see a patient, now if I'm telling you, the patient hemosidrinuria, hemosidrinuria can increase, hemoglobin, let us say 9, and other things in this patient like haptoglobin level is decreased, so you will keep in your mind there is either PNH, and, which is intravascular hemolysis, or glucose 6-phosphate deficiency, or called autoimmune hemolytic anemia, okay? Both of them, LDH and conjugated bilirubin, could be increased, but remember, Unconjugated bilirubin increase more in case of extravascular hemolysis. Once you will see reticulocyte counts, the second, which is the second step after him, after anemic patient, go to the reticulocyte count to see this reticulocyte count whether increase or decrease. If it is increased, that's mean hemolytic anemia. Okay.